You've probably heard a lot about volcanoes within the context of Hollywood productions. Today we're going to go much farther than just explosions and other simple Hollywood tricks. Let's take it back and look at the definition of a volcano. A volcano is a mountain or hill, typically conical, having a center vent through which lava, rock fragments, hot vapor, and gas are or have been erupted from the Earth's crust. Well, that's a pretty lengthy definition, and it's pretty wordy too. So to truly understand volcanoes, we're first going to look at the layers of the Earth. From the outside in, the first layer is the atmosphere, a gaseous layer composed of the air we breathe, oxygen, carbon dioxide, nitrogen, and then there's the crust, and that's what we live on. On average, it's about three miles deep, and it's where the tectonic plates are located. Between the crust and the rest of the Earth, where the upper mantle, lower mantle, and the core is, is a very important, thin, lubricating layer, the lithosphere. We'll talk about more, more about that in a minute. Composing the crust and resting on the lithosphere are very, very large pieces of land called plates. These plates interact with each other. In spreading center volcanism, the plates move away from one another and form ocean ridges. These two plates can also collide. This is called subduction zone volcanism, and a trench is formed and magma is produced. Now that we know how volcanoes form, we're going to talk about magma. Magma known as lava when it reaches the Earth's crust, is composed of a variety of different things. The key ingredient in magma is silicon, though there are other metals which give it its density and its coloring, like magnesium, iron, aluminum, and some alkalis like sodium, potassium, and calcium. They form things called silicate melts. Silica is a chemical compound found in silicate melts. Silica is really silicon dioxide, SiO2 is the chemical formula. It's used to make glass. Now, you're probably thinking, glass, lava, volcanic glass, right? Well, there's a thing called volcanic glass. It's obsidian. Obsidian is volcanic glass, and it's composed of glass, silicon dioxide or silica. But what makes it dark and hard is iron oxide and magnesium oxide. Today, obsidian is used as a blade for knives, knives used in surgery, as well as just knives for cooking. Why it's used is because the actual blade of it, the cutting edge, is very, very sharp on the microscopic level. On the other hand, stainless steel and other metal blades are nowhere near as sharp on the microscopic level. In fact, they're still serrated. Well, enough about obsidian. Let's get back to magma. Under the surface and in the upper mantle, Magma is actually almost a solid because of the pressure, which is very high. When it breaches the Earth's crust, it becomes lava, as I said before. The difference between lava and magma is the pressure is much lighter above the crust, and so lava becomes very viscous. Often one may see lava bubble. That is because lava and magma contain dissolved gases in them, like oxygen. When magma goes to the surface and becomes lava, the pressure is lighter, and the dissolved gases might escape, causing it to bubble. There are four major types of volcanoes. Cinder cone volcanoes, composite volcanoes, shield volcanoes, and lava dome volcanoes. Cinder cone volcanoes are the simplest types of volcanoes. They are volcanoes that occur when particles and blobs of lava are ejected from a volcanic vent. The lava is blown into the air violently and rains down to form a cone-like shape around the vent. Cinder cone volcanoes grow larger than 1,000 feet above their surroundings. Volcanoes also have an element of organic chemistry to them. It is often debated whether volcanoes played a part in the origin of life. When volcanoes erupt, a process caused by the movement of magma beneath, organic compounds are found in the erupted gases. Some people believe that these gases and erupted organic compounds help spark life. Ash coming from Iceland has disrupted air traffic across Europe on Thursday as authorities close airspace over Britain, Ireland, and the Nordic countries, according to an... Volcanoes can have both positive and negative effects on the environment. We saw last year the Icelandic volcano disaster in which all of the European airspace had to be shut as volcanic ash flew through the environment. However, volcanic ash can be good for the environment. It helps fertile soil. Volcanic ash is caused by small rock and glass pieces that are ejected into the atmosphere by gases which decompress and cause eruptions. 
These small pieces of silicon dioxide and metals, such as iron as well as magnesium oxide, can block jet engines. Volcanoes also produce a lot of geothermal heat, which can be harvested as an alternative energy source. It is shield volcanoes that provide this geothermal energy. Now we're going to talk about making your own volcano at home and the chemistry behind that. The most commonly used reaction to simulate an explosion is that between vinegar and baking soda. Here you see the acetic acid, vinegar, and the sodium bicarbonate, or baking soda. They form sodium acetate and carbonic acid. The next step in this multi-step double replacement reaction is that the carbonic acid decomposes into carbon dioxide and water, which causes the fake explosion you're about to see. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video and learned a lot about volcanoes and the chemistry within them.